Hi everyone, good day. Welcome back to our episodes of video lectures for online journalism. And for today, we will be covering uh, more of how to actually write a uh, hot uh, news story using the inverted news pyramid style. Okay, with that, uh, in the previous lecture, we covered on how to write summary leads. And this time around, we will know how to write uh, the second paragraph and so forth. And as well as how to write headlines for a new story. Okay, before I get into the lecture for today, I would like to uh, recap uh, your memory whereby there are two types of news story. The first one would be hot news story, whereby uh, it covers anything that is current that is going around the, in the society, for example, COVID-19, for example, murder cases, court trial charges, and so forth. Anything that is current and, and is being written with facts and only facts, that is a hot news story. And for hot news story, we use the inverted news pyramid style. And the second one will be a soft news story, which is a feature story that I'll be explaining later on uh, in the next upcoming video lectures. Okay, so for today, we focus on how to do a hot news story using the inverted news pyramid style. So what you see here in the screen is an extension of the previous slides. So I would like to recap together with you of the basics of news writing. Okay, because it's a great foundation when you learn journalism, the writing skills for writing news is really, really important. So you have to understand it before you want to write a new story. So let's go through together. Okay. So news writing would be gives the reader information that will have an impact on some way. Okay, so this would be the headline when you see a huge bold letters, like for example, people will call that the topic of, of the news. This is in news, in journalism, we call the topic of the news as headline, okay? And uh, as, as I mentioned before, if you write the story and the story has an importance uh towards a particular day it's a very important story you will get your ownership your your byline of the story so the ownership uh, byline will be the person who writes a particular new story okay and we go through the lead the lead will be the first paragraph okay you can see here the highlight here and we have body and details. Body would be the second paragraph onwards, according to uh, the space that you have uh, for a newspaper or for a news portal. For a matter of fact, it depends on the space that you have. So if uh, if the, the, the editor, your boss, the boss of the journalist mentioned that you need to write a five paragraph of a news story, then you write a five paragraph of a news story. So normally, a uh, hot news story ranges from uh, four to eight paragraphs. Okay, and it, it, it looks just like this. So the body will be the details of the news story. Okay, and as I mentioned before, in hot news, and especially when you write news writing, uh, for current issues, you use the inverted pyramid that suggests it must be told in order of the most interesting or most important to the least interesting or least important. So what you have here is that you include, let me get my pen right here, you include the five W and one H in the first paragraph and continue with uh, the subsequent paragraph with the most important information to the least important information. Okay, so that is that and we go to the next one. Okay. I have covered that. I would like to go through more on the background. 
Okay. Okay, when we talk about the body construction and organization of a hard news story, it explains and clarifies features found in the lead or add features that are not found in the lead. So, for example, if you lead the first paragraph uh, states uh, uh, a, car, a car crash happened last night in Subang Jaya, uh, uh in Subang Jaya, that, that's the lead and you can explain the details in the second paragraph so remember always to put an explanation in the second paragraph of what is happening in the lead okay and we go to the next one which is uh, keep paragraphs short, those limited to 60 words or less or no longer than 10 lines are preferred. So make sure each paragraph of the body would have a maximum of three sentences each and each paragraph should only contain one idea. Okay, only one idea. And remember, short paragraphs encourage readers to continue reading. As I mentioned before, because there's so many news in, a, in an online news portal or a particular hard copy newspaper. So that's why we practice in journalism the inverted news period style to make sure that the readers actually read at least every new story as fast as they could okay and use simple words don't let readers look for dictionary so always use layman words and we go to the next one okay make sure information introduced or outlined in the lead is covered in the same order in the body of the story avoid introducing new information at the end of the story Okay, so what happened is that if you work in a newspaper or an online news portal, you will be you 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 report to your boss. Your boss is called the editor. So the editor will actually uh, edit your news from bottom to up. So the least important information would be uh, from from below, and they will work their way to up because that's how uh, it is being done. And that's why you must, you must organize the most important information in the first paragraph, okay? And then we continue the, to the next one. Okay, add attributions of prominent person. In a new story, you must interview a person. Uh, this is to verify and to justify that your story is true. You could not, uh, uh, so that's what journalists do. When you go and, and for example, to, to, to uh, 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 a COVID-19 scene where you are, re you are reporting and you're, you are based in Hospital Kuala Lumpur, you must find somebody to interview to verify your information or not, you will be doing a new story based on your own assumption. So you must get a person to verify your information. So interviews are really, really important in a hard news story and a soft news story as well. Okay, so that's what attributions are for. You attribute a, a, a sentence according to the interviewee. What is the what the interviewee has said according to your issue? Okay, and we go to the next one, which is the formula how to write an inverted news pyramid style. So the first one would be the lead. Okay, we have the lead right here, and then the second paragraph important information not found in the lead and extend, extension or explanation of lead should be in the second paragraph you explain in the second paragraph then you have direct quotes so this is where where you have interviewed a person for your new story 
you include in the third paragraph. And after that, you summarize uh, in the fourth paragraph uh, of what he or she had said. Or another next point, that if you have another interviewee, you have two or three interviewees for your new, new story, you quote them as well here. Yeah. So it is depending on the uh, significance of the new story, whether it's important or not, you can actually write it longer. But mostly hard news stories have only four to five uh, news paragraph as a standard procedure. Okay, and with that, we go to the next one, which is a uh, complete direct quotation. So there are t there are various types of quotations that that uh, you must know in journalism, which is the first one would be direct quotations, okay, sources, exact words, set of by quotation marks. So when we interview a person, or, or for example, you are, um, you are a journalist and you are, uh, you are assigned to actually hear the Prime Minister's speech, for example. So the Prime Minister or, or somebody you interview would be your source, your source of information. And so, for example, direct quotation will be taking word by word from the interviewee's, uh, interviewee's excerpt. So, for example, here, uh, open quotation, the Supreme Court will consider some of the most significant First Amendment cases of the decade during the coming term, said John Jones, one of the attorney at Jack Chain. So, that will be the exact words that John Jones had said and quoted in your particular news story. Okay? Okay, what happened? Okay, sorry, a little bit glitch just now. Okay, we go to direct quotes. Okay, direct quotes. Uh, an example of direct quotes will be like this, should be linked to the paragraph before them. The quote should elaborate on the previous paragraph. So for example, here, because of anonymous $25,000 donation, students who ride a school bus to and from school will have access to the internet and during the commute starting March 1. So you want to quote uh, your, you want to, you want to link your quotation, okay, uh, and, and you have your paragraph right here, giving free Wi-Fi to our students, will enable them to do research, read uh, the news, or even watch educational videos each day. So this is an introduction of the quotation that you want to explain in your news story. You can do that as well. So it is depending back on the journalist how to write their news. Okay, there is no right or wrong, but in the long run, you have to practice and and do trial and trial trial and errors where you you practice your own style of writing in writing your heart new story. Okay, we go to the next one. Should not repeat in writing direct quotes. You should not repeat the transition or lead before them. So, for example, here. Principal Janet Roth has said that several teachers have been reluctant to give assignments that require internet access. Several of our teachers, open quotation, have been hesitant about giving homework assignments. So please, please never repeat it. Okay, never do this kind of method. So don't repeat the paragraph before. It must have but, you know, you must have a different information, a link of information for your quotation. Yeah. Okay. And we go to the next one. Okay. Direct quotations can be longer than one sentence, should have an attribution after the first sentence of the quote. Attribution would be the person who said the quotation. Okay. Do not place two people's direct quotes next to each other without a transition. Always focus on one quotation first, then move on to another. Okay. And the correct attribution will be correct. Senior Bob Rodriguez said. Incorrect, incorrect will be said. Senior Bob Rodriguez. So always, always the correct attribution will be the person's name and position first, then said. Okay. 
than the verb. Okay, transitions are very, very important and in a new story, it holds the story together, link the paragraphs together, it can be fact, indirect quote, or a partial quote, for example, this will be a fact transition, yeah? Okay, for example, we have the lead here, President Barack Obama will speak on Friday to seniors about getting involved in community service work. So the new story is about President Obama, uh speak on friday to get seniors involving in community service work and there's a direct quotation here seniors will learn a lot about duty and commitment when they hear uh president obama okay uh principal ek sometimes said we are so excited that he agreed to come to the talk and that this will be a fact transition before becoming president Obama work as a community organizer in Chicago. You want to link, okay, you want to link any information to your new story that it can help uh, the readers to understand the background of your news. You can do that. That is a fact transition right here. Okay, we move on to another one would be, can be fact, indirect quote, or a partial quote. So let's see how indirect quote transition works in a news story. So for example, the same news story on Barack Obama. Okay, so we have here, President Barack Obama will speak on Friday to seniors about getting involved in community, in community service work. Okay, direct quotation, seniors will learn a lot about duty and commitment when they hear President Obama. Indirect quote, a indirect quote transition will be President Obama said he believes community service is more important than college in building character. When we talk about indirect quotation, it would be you paraphrasing the exact words of the source, whereby you mention it in a third person. That would be indirect quotation transition. Okay. And we move on to the next one. Partial quote transition. Okay, press, uh, can be fact, partial quote. Let's take an example of a partial quote transition. Still on the same story on Barack Obama. Okay, Pre uh, the lead reads, President Barack Obama will speak on Friday to seniors about getting involved in community service work. The direct quotation will be, uh, seniors will learn a lot about duty and commitment when they hear President Obama. We're so excited that he agreed to come. Partial quote uh, transition would be highlighting the most important uh, theme out of his sentence. So, for example, here, President Obama, okay, President Obama said he believes community service is extremely valuable lesson. So, the the thing that he said the most important, you as a journalist, quote it and for every team. Okay, this will be partial quote transition. Okay, and we move on to the next one. Okay, before I get to my slide right here i would like to remind everybody if you have any questions for every video lecture please drop in our facebook group or text me in any time possible and give me a couple of hours to get back to you to answer your questions all right that is that okay Coming back to the slides, use transitional words to help with the flow as needed. After all, also finally, in addition, however, otherwise, and that this is really, really important to help to help you uh, to help you uh, you know have a good flow for your writing. So this would be the words that you can use. Okay. All right. 
For example, here we have in addition to speaking about community service, Obama plans to tell the students about the importance of voting. Note to be sure use the appropriate transitional words is important. Okay, and moving on to the next one. Okay, in body, try, try to uh, uh, keep your opinion out from the news story because when you write a hot news story, let me remind you that you have to, uh, you have to write based on purely facts and using first and second per person, keep yourself out of the story. So for example, don't use, for example, I will speak. You must use uh, the third person, uh, uh, the third person, for example, uh, the school, okay? And, and avoid messy handwriting, poor grammar and spelling, too long paragraphs, misspelling names in the story, try to use all of the information. So you must, must, must uh, emphasize on the most important information that you need to highlight in your particular news story. Okay, make sure uh, the next one to eliminate the word that whenever possible, eliminate the be verb, okay? Uh, uh, write, she will resign instead of she will be resigning. Write in the future tense instead of future progressive tense. Okay, avoid the contractions of he would and they. He would can be mean both that he had and he would to so make sure to to, to use and to write and recheck your new story every time you write it. Double check the spelling, make sure the numbers, if you have numbers in your new story must be the correct numbers and read the story out loud to catch awkward sentence construction and write, rewrite, revise, rewrite. So in journalism, it's a normal thing to write, rewrite, and edit and revise. It's really, really, really normal. So don't worry when when a person tells you to rewrite, that means it's an opportunity for you to become a better writer and a better journalist. Okay, someone once said that is no great re they, that is no great writing, only great rewriting. So always, always don't feel um you know down when people ask you to rewrite your stuff a normal thing for writers and especially when you are in journalism it's a normal thing for you to rewrite okay okay and then we have grammar as well i'm going to skip that okay and i will go more into the headline writing so when, when we talk about headline writing it'll be the topic of your news okay so a headline is an abstract sentence a headline will determine the angle of the news story it is usually five to ten words only remember that it's a complete thought it has a subject and a verb and of and often an object so for example here be specific, direct, and to the point, write headlines, not titles. So a headline must state a benefit to the target audience. What are you trying to say in your news story must reflect in your headline. Okay, so for example here, North, uh, North U receives P81. S million land property. North, North Syrians elect new student leaders. To the point, nor so produce more, two more summer. So, to the point, so must, must get a benefit to the target audience. Why are they reading your news story? Okay, never be vague. Okay, functions of headline is to attract readers and to tell the story in summary as well. Limit your headline to a maximum of 10 words use instead use uh use uh open quotes and close quotes instead of the word and okay so, and use the present tense of the verb use the shortest words possible for example cop instead of policeman short word be cop nab will be arrest so you use short words don't use long words because you want to catch people's attention Okay, down, if you want to use decrease, you use down. If you want to use against, you use versus. That's fine in headlines. Uh, you want to participate. 
use the word participate, you use join, and if you want to use present, you can actually use practice and, and other short terms as well. Okay. And use historical present tense and the verb is in the active verb. So, uh, and we go to the for it. We go to the next slide. Okay. Do not use a person's surname unless he or she is prominent. Use common noun instead. So, for example, here, okay, this will be your student wins natural painting tilt. Okay, so we go to the next one. And that will be it for the lecture for today. So what I've had, uh, what I've covered in this particular video lecture is that uh, you have to write uh, that is in a hard news story, you have to write a lead, you need to write a body, and you need to write a headline as well. So, uh, and, and to write a hard news story, it's normally four to eight paragraphs, but that is, is if you have space in your online news portal, normally a standard hard news story will be four to five paragraphs only. So, uh, and, and, and you have to write a headline, an appropriate headline for your news story as well. So this, is a particular gist of this video lecture for today and i'll be continue uh continuing uh the video lecture the next video lecture on how to actually uh interview a source interview a person because when you or when you work or when you study journalism it's a normal thing to interview a person you could not be scared you must be upfront clear and bold in getting news that's the most important thing in journalism and i'll be focusing on that in my next video lecture so uh that is the summary of the video lecture for this episode and don't worry from time to time i'll make sure you have uh, an amount of exercise for you to practice your news writing skills, to practice news story, how to write them, so that you will uh, you will get used to to write a story, and to write hard news story, and it will be really useful uh, to to help you in your uh, assignment number one, which you which is you need to write your own news story, two news story, okay? And with that, thank you very much for listening to the video lecture today and have a good day. Thank you, people. Stay safe.